The reading today is one that I need to hear a lot. It's about anger, and it's in Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verses 26 through 27. This is, uh, I'm actually going to give you another reading too at the same time because they go so well together. So Ephesians 4, verses 26 and 27, and James 1, verses 19 through 20. They, they, both sets of verses have to do with anger. And anger can be bad and anger can be good. There is such a thing as righteous anger. Uh, there is a righteous anger against abortion. There is a righteous anger like Jesus uh, displayed when he threw over the money changers tables in the temple. Uh, there is such a thing as righteous anger. And uh, there is such a thing as bad anger. It does depend on the motive. Many times when I find myself getting angry, it is because of my pride. That's certainly not righteous anger. Uh, it's not something that God approves of. It's something that I need to repent of and ask God's help to uh, cleanse me of and change me. So when we read these verses, I want you to think of it in the sense of this is hearing God's word and doing God's word. And this is the type of new life that we are supposed to walk in. <clears throat> in my old life, it didn't matter if I got angry. It didn't matter if I lost my cool or my patience. And the same goes for you believers too, that that was the old life, right? That was expected of us in the old life, but we're in a new life now. We're new creations. So when we fall and fail and sin in that way, we need to identify it and repent of it and sometimes ask forgiveness and sometimes work to, with others to, to guard ourselves against the, the sins that prevail against us easily. So Ephesians 4, verses 26 and 27, be angry and do not sin. This could be exasperated. This could be um, angry in the sense that enraged, um, irritated. That would all fall into the, the Greek definition of this. So you could read it that way. Be agitated, but do not sin. Be exasperated, but do not sin. Be enraged, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. That's Ephesians 4, verses 26 through 27. Far easier for me to fall into temptation to do other sinful things when I allow myself to be angry, enraged. Um, motive again. Motive again. In this sense, even righteous anger can be bad. Because if you hold on to even righteous anger too long, you become bitter. Think of how many people have righteous anger about this or that. And what happens if they don't set it down? It can turn into bitterness. It can turn into resentment. That's why here in Ephesians 4, you're told to let go of it each day. Set it down. Be angry and do not sin. So don't, don't allow yourself to be angry in an unrighteous way where it will lead to more sin. And don't allow yourself, if you're in righteous anger, to stay there because do not let the sun go down on your anger. So you don't want to let it fester in the bad sense and you don't want to hold on to it with a tight grip in the righteous sense because it will lead to bitterness. And both ways will lead opportunity to the devil to tempt you to sin even more. James 1 verses 19 through 20 says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, Michael, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Why? Why should I do those things? For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. When I'm angry in the, the human sinful sense, it does not produce the righteousness that God requires of me. So that means I don't want to be in that mode. Reason being because it's bad for me to be in that mode. I can't do or live the way that God wants me to live and be. Unrighteous anger can lead to resentment. Resentment of each other, uh, resentment towards yourself. This should not be so in we who have been born again and saved by God. The way we guard against that is Philippians 2. 
I, the reason I'm giving this is because I realized this weekend that I still have so far to go, <laughs> you know, especially in anger. You guys would not have known the old Michael. Uh, as, as angry as I can get sometimes now, uh, it was nothing compared to what the old Michael used to be. And so, but uh, sometimes God pulls back the curtain and where you think you've grown a lot, you realize, oh, you have so much more to go. So it had me asking the question, how can I fight against that? anger towards other people or resentment. And it's Philippians 2, verses 2 through 4. Paul says, Make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being united in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or empty pride, but in humility consider others more important than yourself. Humility. Love, unity, unity in spirit and in truth, not just unity kumbaya. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. If I get angry, I, it's a sign to me that I'm probably looking at myself a little too much, instead of looking outside at the people that God's put around me to, to love and to show love to and compassion and humility. And so if I get angry, Many times that source is some form of pride. So the, sol the, the, the solution to that is to consider everyone else better than you, more important than you. Look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. It's, it's selflessness is the answer, not selfishness. As we pray today, let, let's use James 1 and Philippians 2 to be our prayer. Father, forgive me, forgive us for the many times that we have been angered, enraged, exasperated with one another or with others, sometimes even with other believers or family members. And Forgive us. It's so easy to get caught up in ourselves and be wanting to stand and hold that flag because, boy, we know we're right. But sometimes it's better to just let go of that, as Philippians 2 says, and, and in humility, consider others better than ourselves. And instead of fighting that fight to, to be right, to just give in for the sake of unity and love and peace. So, Lord, we ask that you would help us to be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. We want to produce righteousness in our lives. We want to be like-minded. We want to share the unity of love and of your truth and of your spirit. We ask that you would help us combat the selfish ambitions that prevail against us and help us to fight against empty pride and help us to be humble and consider others more important than ourselves, looking to their interests more so than our own. Father, we ask for your help to do this and ask that you'll bless our time together in so many ways. Again, we praise you most of all for your Son and Savior, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.